we we'll have a very interesting discussion about orbitals and then look at the, how we basically get to give electronic configuration using the orbitals. An example of what I'm trying to say is if you look at uh, carbon, we know carbon has got six electrons in its neutral state. So the electron configuration is all that. Okay. So 2p2. What's the electron configuration of carbon? Okay. <clears throat> now, want to understand how we basically go about giving electron configuration in that terms. We also know that magnesium, which has got 12 electrons, can also be represented in this form using the noble gas. That's also another way of giving an electronic configuration. So this gets to represent what we call noble gas electron configuration. This is just electron configuration using the orbitals. So that's basically what we're going to study in this video. So before we begin to our study on that, we need to understand basically what an orbital is. So, so far, under atomic structure, we know that we have what we call energy levels or shells, where we basically get to find uh, electrons. Now, electrons are not necessary, do not necessarily exist on the shells as we get to represent them on these diagrams. So, an exact or a location where there's high probability of you finding an electron is what we call an orbital. So an orbital, you can picture it as something that is like a subshell, or it is part of an energy level. So one thing that you need to understand about an orbital is that an orbital is able to accommodate a maximum of how many electrons? Two electrons maximum. That's what you need to understand about an orbital. So we have a few orbitals that we have to understand. We have what to call the S orbital, the P, the D, and the F. So commonly known as the SPDF orbitals. The S orbital accommodates a maximum of two electrons. The P orbital a maximum of six electrons. The D orbital, a maximum of 10 electrons. The F orbital, a maximum of 14 electrons. So if you've observed, there's a difference of four electrons each. Now, from the beginning, we've made an argument to say every orbital occupies a maximum of two, accommodates a maximum of two electrons. So later on, we understand, as we talk about the quantum numbers, to say, a p orbital basically has got how many electrons has got subshells actually you can think of it in that way. it's got sub orbitals within it so these sub orbitals are the ones that have like two so it has got three sub orbitals that's why it's able to have six electrons the d has got four so basically not necessarily four five sorry so it has got five So, 5. There, this one has got 7. The first one has got a single uh, subatomic orbital. That's why we have all these number of electrons. Okay. So, let's try now to try to see how we basically get to present our electron configuration. How basically do we get to find the electron configuration? Okay. So, this is our periodic table. This is like a skeleton of a periodic table. So this is group one and group two. These are the elements that are between group two and group three, commonly known as the transition elements. Then here I have group three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you may find that hydrogen sometimes is classified to be part of group one. Sometimes it's just somewhere there. And then, of course, in that first period, there's also idiom there. That's why I've, I've, I've tried to show it. So, there's idiom. Okay. And then hydrogen somewhere there. And then we can start with lithium, and then all the other elements gets to go to move just like that. 
So with this understanding of the periodic table, the reason why I'm trying to bring this into picture is for us to understand uh, how we basically get to give our electron configuration. So group 1 and group 2 are referred to as the S block of the periodic table. So this is the S block. 3 all the way up to 8 are referred to as the P block. What is in between here is called the D block. And then what is on the bottom is called the F block. So why are they called these names? Do they just like assign? Were they just assigning? Or randomly giving them? So these S, P, D, F are referring to the orbitals that we are from talking about. So any atom or any element that has got the outermost orbital to be the S. In such a case, it is falls under the S block. Okay, so I can give you an example of uh, lithium, for example. If you look at lithium, lithium has got uh, three electrons, atomic number of three. So this electron configuration, of course, we've not talked about how we get to have it. You find that these are the three electrons, two in the first s orbital and one in the first in the second s orbital. So that is the outermost orbital. So it is in the s block. Now, considering an example of carbon, I said carbon has got six electrons. So we had two s, one s two, two s two, two p two. So the outermost orbital is p. So it tells us carbon is, of course. In the p block the same applies to all the other elements if you consider the transition elements to try to write the electron configuration you'll be able to see that the outermost will be d if you get the ones that are below the f block you also have the same that's where we basically start from with that understanding what exactly are we trying to say so you need to know this trend one s 2s, 2p. So the basic argument is in the first energy level, there's only one orbital. Remember, there's this formula that is used to derive the number of electrons an energy level is able to occupy. So the first energy level, you'd have to put a 1 where there's n. It would just be 2. The, the second energy level, you have to put a 2. 2 squared would be a 4. So the first energy level occupies the maximum. It's, it accommodates a maximum of two electrons. The second energy level, a maximum of eight. If you continue substituting, they are put a three. Three squared is going to be nine by two eighteen. You got the fourth one. Four squared is sixteen, right? Sixteen times two is thirty-two. So this is the way the sh energy levels increase their accommodation they're able to accommodate that number of electrons respectively as we get to increase so with that kind of an understanding we understand as we proceed as we get to go down the number of orbitals get to increase by one so you see so 3s 3p so here i said this increases by one so it will be 3d 4s 4p, 4d, so you will not end there, will also add 4f. This is the argument that I was trying to make to say we get to increase, add an extra. Of course, we end at 4, where well, this is where we, we, we get to have a maximum, right? 4f. Everything else will just be following in, in that. We can't have any other, because remember we said spdf atomic orbitals, SPDF electron configuration. So how basically do we get to give electron configuration? So move like this. 1s, 2s, 2p3s, 3p4s, 3d4p5s, 4d5p. So if you've seen the way I'm drawing the lines. So this is the order that you get to follow. So it, the order when it comes to change when you reach at uh, the d orbital. Okay? The d orbital. So you can't move from 3p and go to 4s. No. And go to 3d. You have to go to 4s. So 
the basic idea is we have one s two s and then the lines are showing as you go to two p you go to three s and then the lines are showing as you go to three p from three p you go to four s and then you get back to three d you go to four p you go to five s so at this point we've already understood how many electrons each um each kind of orbital occupies so we've said s can accommodate two p6 uh, d10 uh, all that so we know f is got 14. so that is going to be very useful in our study of electron configurations now let's say direct to go into obvious and see basically what's going to begin happening in terms of uh, you know we always get to give electron configuration and and whatnot so i did give you an example of magnesium so magnesium has, has got 12 electrons right magnesium is in group 2 which tells us say the the the, the outermost orbit is supposed to be the s since it's in the s block we made that, that argument from the start so what are we trying to say so if we try to give the electron configuration we have two electrons in the first s orbital the line tells us we go up to 2s it occupies the maximum of 2 accommodates the maximum of 2 and then we go to 2p which a maximum of 6 so if you get to add these how many electrons have we used up from the 12 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 6 10 so i'm measuring if two electrons according to the lines they show us from 2p you go to 3s how many electrons are remaining two with an example of magnesium we've already seen that it is actually true because if we look at our periodic table we observe that magnesium is in group two so the outermost shell of magnesium has got 3s okay so i want you to think very smart so if we are to reduce that to 3s1 we would end up with sodium that is going to be very useful as we get to move so the way i think of this is the moment you get to period four it's like one two three are you able to observe that fact there so that's the first period okay second third fourth so i expect that if i'm talking about the outermost here of potassium k it's supposed to be four now i know that this is the first two groups are the s broke so supposed to be s so if it's potassium it will be one because it's in group one if it's calcium it will be two that's the way it works okay now assume i basically get to move on to to these transition elements so understand later we get to get to go about that now just taking you back to period three so if we go to aluminium for example how can we give this electron configuration so obviously we know that the last one is going to this is the p block okay from the, from group three going to eight that's a p so obviously aluminium is the first okay so group three is the first one in the p block so since we are in the third period it's obviously going to be three p and then one so this obviously is the outermost shell for aluminium okay assume we are looking at sulfur we just have to count in the p block one two three four so you end up having three p four that's an understanding that i want each one of us to have and of course that is true so you've used up how many electrons considering sulfur we've used up four electrons already so we know that it has got an atomic number of 16 so we expect that the other 12 electrons are shared starting from the first and you can prove that 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 count this 2 plus 2 4 plus 6 10 12 16 which is true so with this understanding where we're able to predict the outermost shell it takes us to what we're now calling the 
no bogus electron configuration. Okay? Takes us to electron configuration. So you've understood the importance of knowing the periods of the periodic table. And also the importance of knowing the blocks of the periodic table. We said group 1, group 2, that's the S block. This here is what we call the D. And then that is the P. And then this is the F block. That, all that is very important. Very necessary for us to apply. You know, very important. So, one thing that I would want to take you back is, if I go to the previous page here, we are able to see that uh, there's something that is strange in that instead of moving from 3P going to 3D, we are actually going to, to 4S. So, how exactly can we explain that? How exactly can we explain that? Um, so, I'll go back to the periodic table and just try to give you an example about that. Why, we are, why that actually is happening. So, this is period 1, period 2, period 3. So, I gave, us, I gave you an example of sulfur. So, I said sulfur in the outermost shell, since we're in the P block, it's going to be P. And then, count from the first group, which is part of the... Remember, this is all the P block, right? So, group 3 is actually the first one. So, say, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4. So that is where sulfur is. Now, assume we, are, we want to proceed. So instead of this being 4, so it's supposed to be 3 because we're in the third period, by the way. So now, assume we want to go to something in the fourth period. So if I go for argon, I'm supposed to count further. From sulfur, 4, 5, chlorine, 6, argon. So argon is supposed to have... 3P6. Now, what happens the, the moment I go to potassium? It becomes 4, 4S1. The moment I go to calcium, it becomes 4S2. That's the way it works. Now, you realize that scandium going this side is all involving the, the D block. So now, the D block, the interesting part is... Since this is the D block, and then we know that this is the first D block we're having. Remember from period 1, period 2, period 3, there was no D block because there were no transition elements there. So it starts from there. Now, if you go back to our lines there, we're able to see that the first D block we have is the third D block. So that's why there's a bit of some lagging. So if you're in the fourth period, the D block there is 3. If you are in the fifth uh, period, it's four. So, the, what I'm trying to say is the D block lags by a one. Like that. So, if you are in the seventh, you'll be at sixth. So, with that understanding, we'll be able to see that as you get look to scand Scandia, Scandia will have 3D1. That's exactly what we mean. That's one thing that is very important for us to understand. And that's why there's this kind of, of lagging here. From 3P goes to OS again, comes back to 3D. Now you realize that as you go back, after this D broke, you will now have to continue. The 4 now, the 4 applies to the P and the S. So you'll be in the what? You'll be back to the 4P. Which is basically true if you look at this. From 3D, you go back to the 4P itself. Now after the 4P, you observe that after you're done with this 4P, you're going in the fifth um, block period. So the S will apply. So it will be 5S, which is exactly what we have. From 5S, you go back to the D block, right? So which will be the 4. That is basically something that is true and very interesting. Okay? That is very simple for us to understand. And that's going to be very useful as we get to look at Giving electron configuration using the noble gas electron configuration. Okay. So let's try to look at certain examples about that. Um, so I'll start with the very magnesium that we looked at. So if we see magnesium, this was this electron configuration. So how can you give this electron configuration using the noble gas electron configuration? It is also called the short and uh, electron configuration. 
or notation. So if you look at it, what is going to be very helpful is we are going to be working with um, with the noble gases. So the noble gases are these ones in group 8, starting from idiom all the way up to somewhere. That I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know the name of that uh, element on the bottom there. We can start by looking at lithium even before we go to magnesium. So if you look at lithium, it's in group uh, group 1. And then it's in the second period. So we have to get the noble gas before that period where the element is. So in this case, lithium is in period 2. So we need to go back to period 1. What was the last noble gas? It was idiom. So the way you give this electron configuration will be idiom. And then... Now we need to identify the outermost shell. So you realize that since you are in the second period, it's two. And then this block is the S block, so it's say S. And then lithium is the first one, so it's one. If you are looking at beryllium, it is going to be 2S2. So this is exactly the, the electron configuration for lithium using the noble gas electron configuration. In a case where we write it in a normal way, would expect to start from 1, S2, 2S. Now it has got an atomic number of a 3, so obviously we just end up with a 1. So the main idea is what we are trying to say is this first part has been presented using the noble gas. Since the noble gas had 2 electrons, an atomic number of a 2. That's the way it basically gets to work when you're looking at the noble gas electron configuration. Now again, um, Giving you an example of uh, of magnesium, if you check here, magnesium we are ending with 3s2. So we can represent all this first part using a noble gas. So if I take you back, so magnesium is in the third period. So we can basically use the previous period, which was uh, period 2. The last noble gas was neon. So neon has got an atomic number of a 10. So just write neon, put it in these brackets. And then the first block is the S, and we are in the third period, so we'll say 3S. Now count from the first 1, 2. So it's 3S2. Now this is basically true. This is indeed the last uh, orbital, even after following our order there. So now this is the full electron configuration. This is a noble gas electron configuration because we are using a noble gas to present the electron configuration. And of course you realize that this is a bit faster. It is faster indeed when you look at very big elements. Now let me try to make it a bit more interesting and look at something that is a bit bigger. So let me consider sulfur again. Sulfur. So if I try the electron configuration of sulfur, start counting the electrons. You have something like that, 2p6. 3s2 and then 3p so 1 2 3 4 so that is the electron configuration of sulfur in 4 now with a noble gas electron configuration all you just have to do is look at the period where you are so sulfur is in period what so we are also in the third period so the previous period was of course still period 2 so neon was the last noble gas before now, this is where it becomes a bit interesting because you find that we are not just going to write the last orbital. There will be some orbitals before that. So, moving from neon, we've used up 10 electrons. So, as we move from neon, you find that we have to go through the S block. So, the S block, we're in the third period. So, the S block is 3S. Now, since we are not ending there, we have to fill it all up. 3s2. If we end there, then we are representing magnesium. Now we are not representing magnesium, so continue counting. Now there are no, there is no d block here, so we are just leaving it blank, and then we are now finding ourselves back in the p. So the three will still apply to the p block as well. Now how many are we counting? So this is the first one, the second, third, and the fourth. So basically, that's where it ends. That is. The noble gas electron configuration of sulfur using the noble gas electron configuration. Of course, not very bad. It's matching up. It is matching up. So what about if we try to make it a bit more interesting, actually? 
What about the one that is involving the rock now? Uh, what if we get to consider maybe something like let's consider vanadium. Let's consider something like vanadium now. So this is the way we're going to do it. So we are in the fourth period. Fourth period. That's where vanadium is. Now, if you got the previous period, which is the third one, the last noble gas was argon. So you write argon. Now, of course, take note that argon has got taken up 18 electrons. So you have to add to make it 23. Okay, so from argon, for me to get to vanadium, I need to first of all pass through the, the S broke, which is in the fourth period. So I have to fill it all up, 4S2. Now, if I end at 4S2, it means I've represented calcium. Now, I've not represented calcium. I need to get vanadium. So, this is exactly where the D-Brock is starting from. Now, I mentioned earlier to say, this is the first D-Brock. And the first D-Brock, according to what we had written, was the, the third. So, that's why there is a bit of some lagging. So, if you're in the fourth period, the D-Brock will be the third. And so on and so forth. So, from there... We understand that despite us being in the fourth period, we are in the 3D block. So the first one is scandium. So I'll count one, two. So vanadium is the third one. So I'll put a three there. Wow. Interesting, right? So what is the noble gas electron configuration of vanadium? Using the short and notation. It's faster. Instead of you writing, counting all the way from 1S2 all the way up to 3D, it will take a lot of time, right? It will. Okay. So, looking at this very uh, period, so if we had gotten something like arsenic, which is like 33, would still use argon because it's the last one. Now, the difference would be, we know that for us to skip the D-Brock, we have to put 10 electrons since we are not interested. So, if we end at 10, it implies we are representing zinc, but we are not. So, continue moving. So we'll find ourselves back in the P-Brock, because the P-Brock starts from the third period, right? So remember the P and the S matches up with the period where you are. So we'll still be in the 4P. Now counting from the first one, 1, 2, 3. So it's 4P3. So this is electron configuration using the noble gas for arsenic. This is basically the way it gets to work. I believe you now have... An understanding on how you get to give the electron configuration in a normal way using the orbitals and also using the short annotation, also known as the noble gas electron configuration. Thank you very much for watching this video. In the next video, we are going to talk about uh, the exceptions to these configurations we've been giving copper. Copper and chromium are the main exceptions to the electron configuration. There's some changes. We don't basically just get to fill in the way we've been filling in the others. Okay. So thank you very much once more for watching. Have a blessed day.